Hey guys, this is me, Abhinav, and uh, welcome back to the Throne in the Deep channel. So today, I'm just going to give you a quick overview of how I prepared for my Plab 1 exam, uh, which is a uh, like medical licensing exam for practicing in the UK as a doctor. For this video, we are going to use a software called Microsoft OneNote. It's a pretty popular software, and if you're using a Windows computer, it's already there in your system. I mean, they put it there. <laughs> with your uh, Windows installation. So uh, you can go to the computer and uh, find Microsoft OneNote. If not, you can download it from, uh, just Google for it. Uh, so once you get hold of that software, so you also need a preparation material, of course, like th there are many options. There are past medicine, there is Plabable, there is MedRevision, and uh, Plab1 keys, and a couple others. Um, you can pick any one, they are all quite you know, good. So I had three months to prepare. Okay, and uh, I'll be honest, I spend most of my time uh, preparing, like about five or six hours every day um, preparing for the PLAB exam. So for the PLAB 1 preparation, I relied heavily on note taking. Okay, and uh, note linking as well played a vital role in my preparation. The more you can link between notes, the better you can prepare. Of course, there are ready made notes like the PLAB 1 keys. But I also had to uh, make my own because uh, Plab1 keys isn't the best resource out there. And uh, lots of feedback from the comment section in the Plabable, as well as uh, some info here and there that you figure out for yourself. So another background that I want to give is I could not finish the Plabable syllabus. I left out so many sections. And for mocks, I did five mocks. And I was getting around 75-80% uh, by the end of the mocks, so it wasn't like very high end, but I gained the confidence how to do it in the uh, required amount of time, as well as uh, how to, you know, how to be confident with what you are answering, because sometimes the answers can be tricky and you are just guessing, for the most part. But it's an educated guess; it's not a blind guess. So for all these things, I mean, I do not need to go in depth with what you can achieve with note taking, right? So yeah, let's just jump into it. So this is the um, this is the Microsoft OneNote uh, interface. I created a notebook called MBBS. Inside MBBS, I have uh, different subjects, etc. Let's focus on Lab One. Yeah. Once you go inside Lab One, uh, you can see all the notes that I made. All right. So yeah, initially my plan was to do the handwriting method, and uh, Microsoft OneNote is pretty good in understanding the handwriting. So I gave, I gave reference to the page numbers and then I wrote quick notes on this. I could study on my phone as well. These lines, I custom drew them. And uh, the information I got, like, usually in Plabable, they, they mostly give it as, uh, like, you know, paragraph description. But it's better if you convert it to a flowchart. Um, so, yeah. So this is uh, my anatomy notes. And uh, some little bit on brachial plexus, a reference video. And the whole brachial plexus. You can actually zoom. And the handwriting still stays clear. Okay. All right. So then cardiology. Similar. I loved my cardiology notes. They look like a mess. But it's fantastic. Uh, you can see I could take screenshots as well and like uh, put them in the thing. In the... In the notes, all you need to do is just press Windows key, Shift key, and S on your keyboard. So they enable the screenshot layout. Then you just drag any portion which you want. All right, you got it. Then you find an empty space in your notes. Then you just paste it. Oh, let me get pasted. Yeah, there you go. This time it worked. So. Yeah, control Z to undo. Okay, yeah, so regarding the cardiac cycle, I had studied it earlier. I found, uh, I, I finally made my own video. You can check it out somewhere. There'll be a link uh, that I will reference to this. I have made a 20 minute video on how to understand the cardiac cycle with all the murmurs. So that's a bonus plug, shameless plug. Not shameless, I'm proud. Anyway, I had to switch to uh, the tabular format. I love the tabular format. And you can mix and match, as you can see here. This is the Weber um, syndrome, this is the Wallenberg, this is the right and fair lesion. 
then I go on to uh, just writing the treatment for neuro. Okay, so how do you make a table, right? So you just start anywhere, you start typing FTR, okay. Then you press the tab button, it automatically creates a table like magic. You type hi there, okay. Now you can press the uh, tab button to create a third tab. Like you can type more stuff like, okay, th this column will only be for links. So I can give an nhf.com slash stroke or whatever link that I found on the web. But for now, let's keep it to two. Then now, if instead of pressing tab, you hit the enter key, it creates a new line. Okay, and then you can type another th term like TIA. Then uh, you can fill it up with whatever, okay, uh, less than 24 hours. Then you can press enter. You keep making like this, okay? Okay, now. Okay, you'll figure it out, no worries. Um, then uh, you can type anything, hit enter, type, tab, enter, tab, enter, tab, enter, tab, enter. You got the gist. Now, you, to sort it alphabetically, go to the whichever column you want to uh, arrange it in. Go to the, uh, include, the, include the header as well to include the top row, otherwise it'll stay as it is, thinking it's like a heading. So let's say, let's go to include header, then go to sort A to Z. Now you can see they're all sorted alphabetically. Start from A, then go to J, K, F, T. All right. So this makes it very convenient for you to find whatever you want. You can, after your, you can add a middle, uh, a row in the middle by hitting control enter. You can type any random thing like, uh, let's say stroke. And tap to go to the next line. H, I, I there. <laughs> now, since it'll be hard for you to find later in this alphabetical mess, you can just tap on this, go to the tables, choose the sort alphabetically, it will be done. Now you'll find it where it's supposed to be found. F T A T S F T R. Okay, great. This is where I want it. Okay, so that's how you go about doing it. Then, uh, yeah. So this is my note for then again, uh, because neuro and psych are more or less similar, I continued with psych treatments here itself. And uh, it's easy to just reference them back and forth. Similarly, I took notes on uh, critical care. Uh, similarly, I used uh, the images and pasted them inside if I needed them to be in the table as well. You can even make sub tables like atopic disease has, so like eczema, ex eczema herpeticum, uh, urticaria. Then again, we are back to the main uh, column of, I mean, autoimmune. These are the pemphigus, uh, vulgaris, bullus, pemphigoid. You got the gist. All right. Similarly, more images. Then so for erythema, I put in comparison image from net. So you can basically prepare your own notes. Then like all, all the similar confusing uh, term, like terms and diseases with a different presentation, you can all club them up as a sub table, like a nested table as they call it, table within a table. Yeah, and then this can also be sorted alphabetically. It's already sorted. Then, uh, yes. So this I made, then fungal. All right. So, yeah, let's say we make all these nodes we study. And uh, now we want to, like, we like sometimes it happens that you find the nodes of one thing has already been written in the other section. What do you do? You can just link it. Like, you can see, uh, so once the table becomes really long, what I did was, uh, let's say cons do this is a quick, quick summary of all the conditions that can affect adrenal gland All right, so if you take cons disease like this is in uh, syndrome. This is in short But if you want I can uh, go down. I found wherever con is click it. Yeah, so you you find the you see This is the detail that I wrote on cons syndrome uh, Did I do something? All right. So then you can right click it then you can go copy link to paragraph Come back to where you want to make the link. Let's say I want to make high as the link then you press right click then, uh, all right. Hmm. All right, doesn't matter. You double click it, then you press Control K. All right. So now this text to display and the address. The address will be this thing that we copied, the link to the paragraph. All right, once I hit insert, now you can see it's a link. Now when I click it, it takes me back to where I want to go. All right. So uh, let's undo this for now. Similarly, you can also I still have the link to that uh, consumer copied. Now let's say I can go to another section. I can say reference to new to adrenal whatever. So then I can uh, let's say I select the word control K and done. Right. So reference to adrenal. Now if I click this, I'm actually taken to the endocrine section of the con syndrome wherever it is. So that's convenient. And then on the top here. 
you can see the back button right i come back here now i delete it because of it i just did it as an example so this is how you can interlink nodes all right so similarly you can see out here i've done the same for personality disorders all of them in one place epidemiology the couple of formulas which i need ethics all right so this is just a simple table Deeds. all right see in asthma you need to like discuss between asthma in uh, like uh, children versus adults uh, and etc so i can put a quick link to asthma and respiratory it went to the respiratory section and there i have a more detailed note on uh, asthma all right this is the power of microsoft one note then you can add random google drive links or you can add any link that you feel you will need to refer later on one note literally does what the name says takes notes all right it's a microsoft way of saying one okay you know that so all right what else, what else? See a link to the Plabable as well. <laughs> if I click it, it will take me to the Plabable website, but I'm already logged in on the device. All right, doesn't matter. Anyway, yeah. So coming back, this is the notes that I took. You can see they're highly detailed. But of course, see, it is for your personal use. You find whatever is useful. Anyway, so like, apart from this, I'll show you my uh, Lab 2 preparation. Uh, plan so I made a list of all the questions that were there in uh, OBG and I mean the calls OBG neuro etc got got made a list then I I don't I noted the start days and how many days it took me to finish and, uh, Whenever that day, whichever has this kind of date. I did not actually finish it And so forth. So yeah, this is uh, and then I used the formula out here to calculate how many days I need uh, I need to proportionally distribute among subjects so that I can finish everything before the exam. Of course, that didn't happen. <laughs> As you can see, I left a lot of them untouched. But it didn't really matter. I got uh, 138 out of uh, 180. I could have done better. But I'm happy with it. Once you passed, you passed. And uh, you don't even need to finish it. You just need to be good at note-taking. If you have a good note-taking strategy, you can get away with uh, not knowing everything. Uh, so okay guys uh, that's it um i hope this video has been helpful to you in some way uh, lots of people don't rely on taking notes on the computer and uh, i would say you should reconsider because it's a very helpful tool all right and uh, it's good if you start early because it takes some time to get hang of it six i've been using microsoft one note for the past uh, 15 years now like it's ancient <laughs> so yeah I am currently uh, preparing for Plab 2 here in Manchester, and this is my room. Let me just give you a quick view of the other side. There you go. All right, guys. I hope you loved it. Peace out. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Like, what are you doing? You watched this far and you didn't subscribe, huh? Okay, bye.